Hey, everyone. How you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> so uh, just so you know kind of where we're at while we're recording this, uh, I was just editing the very first episode of this to go up last night. Today mm-hmm. is the Monday MLK day that the first episode went out. Um, which also means I got the distinct pleasure of revisiting that for opening the cold open to this game. Yeah, huh? With the with the ideas I had just been thinking about in the previous episode, which leads me to the conclusion that the opening is likely Keiichi dismembering Rena. Hmm. Right. His paranoia has gotten the better of him at that point, and he it has led him to proactively kill the 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 girls around him, and it turns out he's the big. He is the problem, not them. <laughs> Would Ryu Kishio 7 do that to you? Yes. Yes. Yes, he would. <laughs> our, 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 our. <laughs> of course he would. What kind of a question even is that? Of course he would. Um, I also had some other random, like, um, bedtime thoughts about this. Yeah? Yeah, like, as I was falling asleep, I became absolutely convinced, like, wouldn't it be fucked up if, like, the reason Oishi knew to reach out to um, Keiichi was that Keiichi already had a record in his previous schools. Like, that's why they had to move and stuff. And the police were keeping an eye on him. But wouldn't it be fucked up if Oishi was feeding Keiichi information because he knew Keiichi was unstable and that was a way to take care of them? It is. It is. <laughs> that would be fucked up. Certainly interesting that we know very little about Keiichi's background, don't we? Yeah. We, he's been we doing were... a lot of prying into the girls' backgrounds and the town's history, but... We know remarkably little about what things were like before the game started for him. Yeah, we were talking about that um, after we finished yesterday. Um, which also kind of feeds into the point that like, where our, direct- our attention is being directed in every direction except at the person who is giving us this, uh, who is delivering the story. And I've got to imagine that the, the, without full knowledge of what's going on with Keiichi, you know, it, it's hard to take everything he's... All of his paranoid thoughts as anything more than just paranoia. Mm. You know? I I, I, I I do think learning more about Keiichi and his background is going to be important. All and right. the thing is, it would be complete, very easy to just read this without considering that, right? And just be like, oh my god, everything is happening so strangely around him. But... No, this guy ain't well. <laughs> I feel like... A great thing about the VN, as opposed to the anime, is in the anime it's even easier, right? To just I have no look at what you're seeing. The anime. I mean, no, 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 no. Let let me finish my sentence. In an anime, right? Mm -hmm. So you're just seeing what's presented to you. Yep. And it's a lot easier to just sit there and watch it and see it all happen. Whereas in this, where we're getting what's very much someone's internal monologue yep. as all of these things happen, yep. and we're not actively seeing these things, it's a lot easier to kind of take it with some skepticism and think right. about what's what's really happening here. We're not Is used... it what we think? Is it different than what we think? I feel like it's it's more difficult to take a um like a visual like like an animation and then try to doubt the framing device of it Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i I feel like we're we're more given the history of the medium we're more likely to take what we see in in like animation or in film at face value Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah that is one i guess an advantage i have here yeah this was the first time i'd ever woke with such clarity Uh (laughs) uh-oh it was 5 59 just moments before my alarm would go off I was amazed at the precision of my internal clock. Oh, sorry. I, uh, hold on. Technical difficulties. <laughs> and by technical difficulties, I mean I need the mouse here. <laughs> I had made preparations for the next day of school before I went to bed. I changed quickly and descended into the deserted lower floor. All right, so now he's going to arm himself. Because that's, again, a safe and healthy thing to do yep that's what he was thinking about how can he get something for self-defense yep while everyone's still asleep self-defense after having violent and vivid images and um violent and vivid fantasies is the word about violence enacted with a baseball bat Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, right because that's what that was that's what that whole scene with him thinking about rena was that was a fantasy 
That's something he concocted based on incomplete information he was given. Mm -hmm. Maybe she broke all the windows with a baseball bat in a really cool and normal way. I <laughs> maybe I like legitimately like there's like there are reasons to break stuff. Like 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 I'm there there could be a reason for, I'm not saying that there has to be I'm saying mm -hmm. there could like um fucking there's that uh, fucking viral YouTube video that's been around for a while right of this guy breaking all the beakers in his chemistry lab mm. there is a sensible reason for him to be doing that mm -hmm. right because um no, having one of them failed and not knowing um which ones were also contaminated by that you have to break them all in order to make sure that you're not uh, exposing. Uh, people using that glassware to dangerous chemicals. Mm -hmm. That's there's a sensible reason for that, right? I'm just saying we don't have all we have is the word of some guy who clearly has an agenda. <laughs> hey, these windows are dangerous. I'm going to keep you all safe from them. Maybe smash. Maybe it smash. is. Maybe it is exactly that. And she just had like a dissociative break or something and smashed every window in the school. Maybe it is just that, but. I don't, like, we shouldn't be jumping to that with how much information we have. <laughs> Break all the windows in your <laughs> buildings. That's it's not cool what I'm and saying. Normal, that's not what I'm saying. Comment section. That's not what I'm saying, right? I'm, I'm, I'm making sense here. Please tell me I'm making sense <laughs> You <here>. are. You <laughs> are. I am just, I am just, the meme smithing is ramping up already. I see. I'm sorry. It appeared my mom was still asleep. Neither breakfast nor lunch was ready. Why would they be at 6 a.m.? Yesterday, I just unilaterally declared that I would be leaving early today, so it couldn't be helped. Slathered jam on some bread and topped it up with instant cocoa. Just as I was finishing up breakfast, Mom rose groggily from her slumber. My, Keiichi, you're up early. Is there some sort of school event? Uh, not really. No. Answering bluntly, I picked up my bag and stood after stuffing two slices of bread down my throat. You're leaving already. What about lunch? If you don't wait a bit, I, can, I can't make it. If I waited for her to make my lunch, then it would end up being the same time as usual. If I did that, it would raise the chances of me running into Rena and Mion on the way. Yes, from today onwards, I was going to go to school alone. I'll be fine for today, thank you. Then what will you do for lunch? I'll slip out and buy some bread or something at the store. Really? Then here's some lunch money. Be sure to bring me back the receipt. I took the thousand yen bill from Mom and slipped it into my pocket. It's pretty early. Is Rena Chan up this early as well? No, just me. Did you tell Renachan that you're leaving early? I have no reason to tell her every little detail now, do I? Finding it difficult answering the onslaught of questions, I made an annoyed face. Tell Rena I went ahead when she comes. Hey, Keiichi, wait! It's not that I didn't trust my parents, I just couldn't rely on them. <laughs> now imagine this from Keiichi's mom's perspective. Your son last night just declared, hey, if I die, I need you to bury me with the clock I made. Also, now I'm going to school early. Uh, I don't trust any of my friends anymore. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't help me. I could only hope that they didn't get involved. It was safer that way. My mom's annoying voice was cut off by the slam of the door. Yeah, and see, now in his internal monologue is more like disgruntled teenager vibes to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like... But the first time since I moved here, I headed down the road to school alone. Up until now, I had always walked down the same path at the same time each day. So I always met with the same people at the same places. But today was different. I didn't meet the people I would normally do, and nobody was at the places where I would have normally met them. Of course, Rena wasn't in the spot where we usually met, and there wasn't anyone at the spot where we would have met up with Mion. The length of the tree's shadows, the morning air, and the brightness of the sun, it was a completely different type of morning from what I was used to. Without a doubt, it felt strange. It left me with the impression that I had destroyed the illusion Hinamizawa had set up for me before it had enough time to prepare all the props needed to deceive me. Uh-oh. NPC syndrome. <laughs> My, Keiichi-kun, you're so early today. Is everyone meeting early this morning? The person who called out to me was someone we always passed by as they were taking a walk along the edge of the fields. Their name was... Uh, I forgot. Of course, this wasn't the spot where we usually passed each other. 
I woke up early today, so I thought it would be a good change of pace. Uh, that's all. I threw out a random excuse. What about Renatron and Mionchon? Aren't you by yourself today? Well, yeah. I was being asked the same type of questions my mom was asking. So I answered them in the same uninteresting, vague manner. It wasn't funny being asked where Rena was each time I passed by someone. But maybe it was to be expected. It's because for so long we were always together so amicably. Even I felt that if I let my guard down, we could still be friend. Stop it, Keiichi. Don't think about that anymore. You spent all day yesterday thinking about how dangerous it was to go soft, didn't you? Beep, 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 beep. A car horn blared out from nowhere. Even though I was locking, walking lost in thought, that horn was way too close. A mechanical behemoth barreled at me from behind, catching me completely off guard. By the time I turned around, the van's hulking chassis was almost on top of me. I had seen plenty of cars veer to the opposite shoulder to avoid pedestrians, but this car was doing the opposite. It felt like... It felt like there was someone on the opposite shoulder, and the van was serving, swerving in my direction to avoid them. That blissfully ignorant train of thought delayed me from realizing something much, much more important. That large mass was hurtling right at me. Was it going to hit me? The inside of my head instantly flooded with a painfully cold liquid. In that moment, the scene before me, no, time itself had frozen. What if Keiichi got isekai? That's what I was going to say. Is he about to get... <laughs> right here and now. You've been hit by... You've, you've been, been struck, struck by... Truck. truck. Ow! <laughs> In the silence of that frozen moment, I compared the van so close that I had no way to dodge it and my body, the upper half, twisted awkwardly in order to look behind me. There was no way I could dive out of the way in my current position. If I lost focus now, this moment would unpause, and I would probably be plowed over, caught in this silly pose. Bend my upper body over toward the paddy by the side of the road. If I bent far enough, I'd get away with just being hit by the side view mirror. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, the temporal stasis was shattered by the deafening sound of the van. The side mirror struck my shoulder, sending me spinning off through the air like a top, locked in my contorted position. Splash! Sent tumbling through the air, I crashed into the muddy paddy by the side of the road. My entire body was soiled and drenched. But the choice I had made in that instant was unmistakably for the best. I was covered in mud, but when the alternative was being hit by the car, it was the closest I could be to being unscathed. Rising out from the paddy, I had enough in me to glare over at the stopped van and yell profanities at the driver. Not sure if he was able to see me, but the van sped off suddenly. Wait! Damn it! This... this is what they call a hit and run, wasn't it? I couldn't help but continue yelling out profanities. The disgrace from being covered in mud hurt me more than any physical wounds. I slogged through the muddy paddy and made my way back to the road. This is a crime, goddammit! Shit. I'll track you down and I'll sue you. If I go looking for a van, I'm sure to find it in this little village. Yeah, and his, like, narration is getting more and more unhinged the more this, the deeper that paranoia sets mm. in him. But at the same time, with some plausible deniability, if you just got hit and run by a van, sure, you'd be pretty mad. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, there's, and that's and that's what makes it so difficult to tell whether or not this is actually the right train of thought, because like there is enough plausible deniability, right? Mm -hmm. But that's also like the author walking that tightrope. <laughs> Excuse me. The path I was on had rice paddies on either side, and it had become so narrow that one car could barely fit through. It wasn't a place you could tear full speed down in a car, let alone pass by pedestrians. Not only was it a narrow road, but the car just now was closer to my side of the road than the other when it went past me. Even as I cursed, I was desperately trying to suppress the dark cloud roiling up within me. This wasn't just a hit and run. That car just now was trying to run me over, wasn't it? Thinking back, I did feel like there had been a car creeping up on me slowly for a while. That's right, as soon as I'd parted ways with that person taking a walk, I had that feeling the whole time. 
yeah, you had a feeling, but was it actually? <laughs> You're certainly ascribing a lot of stuff to the past now that something important has happened to the present. If it had wanted to pass me, then it had no shortage of chances. See, we've already jumped from hypothetical to this is actually how it must have been. Mm-hmm. I see you there, Cagey. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta slow down. You gotta slow down, buddy. Normally, I would have felt suspicious and turned around sooner. But I was lost in thought, and now was kicking myself for not realizing it was there sooner. And then when the path became narrow and there was no one else in sight, he floored it. If I had hesitated for even a moment, the result would have been no laughing matter. As the adrenaline rush from my nearly being run over subsided, and the realization of just how terrifying the preceding events were sunk in. There was no doubt about it. That van was intentionally trying to hit me. A cold, viscous sweat seeped from my scalp and slid down my back before dribbling off. I struggled to avoid falling into a panic. There was still the possibility that this was really just an accident. Calm down, Keiichi. But also, don't be so naive, Keiichi. Being that lax will get you killed next time. You need to always be on your toes. Don't give them any openings. If my enemy was really out to kill me, then the next time they would use a more reliable method. If that time came and I was acting like I was now, I being covered in mud was the price I had paid for my own naivete. Covered in mud, but without injury. Not even a sprain. I guess this is what you would call the silver lining. I began walking again, this time cautiously. I wouldn't even show a hint of carelessness. I had suspected only Rena and the others up until now. No, it was because I had suspected them that I had believed that there were no other enemies. Oh, Ishisan had said so, didn't he? There was the possibility that all the families of the village were involved. Was I really mired so deeply in the situation that I had no choice but to try and carry on as usual? Wouldn't it be safest to just hole myself up in my house? But the moment I abandoned my regular routine, everyone around me would abandon theirs as well. That was just too horrifying of a thought. I recalled the tales Oishisan had told me of when Hinamizawa was still called Onigafuchi. A frightening tale of an entire village of demons hunting their prey, surrounding them, and eating them alive. One must not interfere with the demons. One must pretend not to see it. The enemy were numerous, all of the village families, the villagers, with their unwavering faith in the curse, would do nothing to help me. Keiichi really is like the epitome of make up a guy and get mad at him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like we, it is important to remember, take a step back and be like, this is all stuff that Keiichi has concocted for himself. Nothing he is being paranoid about right now is based in any anything that has happened. Yeah, being like nearly being hit by a truck, sure, but all the other stuff after that, no, this is all just him spiraling. Like this is him taking the worst possible version of events and running with it as far as it'll go. The strong sudden flash of sunshine made me slightly dizzy. I had no idea what was going on anymore. When I suspected it was the work of a man, I would catch a glimpse of Oyashiro Sama's curse. And when I suspected it was Oyashiro Sama's curse, someone would poke their head out. What was coincidence, and what was intentional? Who was my enemy, and who was just a bystander? No, what I really, truly wanted to know was how did I end up with the proverbial bullseye painted on my back? Eventually an answer in a form I could understand will appear. I don't care when that will happen, because until then, I cannot die. That alone fueled my resolve to fight and will to keep me alive. I remembered seeing the metal bat in the gym's storage shed, but there was a padlock on the door barring my entry. At the very least, I wanted to get my hands on it before everyone else arrived at school. I circled around the school grounds impatiently. But all I could find were things like pieces of lumber, nothing that could bring into the classroom easily. And then I had an epiphany. I should search inside the classroom. If it was something in the classroom to begin with, then there wouldn't be a problem, would there? I could tell that everyone's indoor shoes were still in their lockers. Good thing I came early. No one else is here yet. 
I wondered what could I find in the classroom. I didn't think I could find an especially effective weapon like a bat, but it couldn't be helped at this point, right? Until the gym storage shed was open, I needed to find a substitute. A lingering hint of naivete whispered that there was no way I'd be attacked at school, but such soft ideas would no longer protect me. To think that they were slowly making their way into parts of my life that I had once thought impenetrable. In the worst case, my own house might not be safe anymore. That was an incredibly frightening thought. But I believe that not considering the worst case scenario would have been even more frightening. Anyways, I will survive. So long as I lived, then I will definitely be able to escape this labyrinth of nonsense. Definitely. I like how he calls it a labyrinth of nonsense. <laughs> yeah, you trap yourself in that thing, KG. This is... <laughs> Dude. My exploration of the classroom came to an impasse. That much was to be expected. There was no way there would be anything that could be a weapon in the classroom. In case of emergency, there was probably nothing I could do but swing my own chair around. My gaze landed on the lockers that had come to be used for personal storage. The locker that Mion used to store her pile of games was among them. There was one for each person in the class all lined up. Of course there was one for me as well. Yeah, there was supposed to be still be a tracksuit in my locker. Seeing me covered in mud would be strange. I should go change later. But first, I needed a weapon. If one of my classmates came, it would be hard to rummage through all the lockers. I swiftly began opening them one by one. They were mostly just filled with things like gym clothes, personal items, and umbrellas. <laughs> Keiichi! You got to stop for a moment here and think about what... Casing the school is not normal behavior, all right? <laughs> like, you know what this makes me think about? What? This makes me think about, like, like school, like, violence at schools. Mm -hmm. This makes me think about, like, school shooting mentality. Yeah. Like, and this was... This would have come out after Columbine, right? I don't remember when... Was that the 90s? The timeline of those hmm. things was. But... Regard regardless, like, that's the vibe I'm getting. Like, KG, you are getting to the point where you are a threat to everyone around you. Oh my god. This is... This is, like, genuinely, like, unnerving and, like, uncomfortable to, mm -hmm. to read. Yeah. What happened to the fun little, like, let's all hang out with friends and play board games? Losing at Cluedo is serious business. Losing at Cluedo is serious business, actually, though. That is <laughs> that is true. An umbrella. If I couldn't find anything better, this would have to be my weapon. I was about to give up on finding anything decent when I opened a locker that held exactly what I wanted. It was, without a doubt, a metal bat. It was well-worn, pretty beaten up, but... There was no doubt that it was usable. In that locker that reeked of mold, there also hung a baseball uniform. It was probably the locker of a student in a peewee league or something like that. If that was the case, then he'd probably ask for it back. That time I could hear the voices of the children scuffling their way in noisily from the hallway. Amongst them I could make out Rika-chan and Sadako. Good morning. My, my. You are quite early this morning, Keiji-san. <laughs> I nonchalantly hid the bat I was holding behind my back. Right, because that will work. <laughs> Keiji, I cannot see you hiding anything behind your back. <laughs> it looks perfectly normal when you stand like that, you know. W what is with your outfit? You're covered in mud. Uh, yeah, I, uh... I had a little incident. Uh, I'm gonna go change now, so cut me some slack, all right? With that said, I began taking off my clothes. Sadako began to blush as I, just as I expected her to. Ch changing in front of a lady? Have you no tact at all? I would think that a lady staring at someone who was changing would be the one lacking in tact. There's no changing room for the boys, so just deal with it. There's no changing room for the boys, so just deal with it, yeah? As Sadako feigned disgust, she went into the hall, still blushing. Conversely, Rika-chan continued to stare at me, preparing to change. Uh, if Rika-chan is a lady as well, I don't think it'd be appropriate for you to be watching. I'm not a lady, so it's fine. Oh, what? She deliberately pouted and looked at me with upturned eyes. Hmm, okay. Oh, well, then starting now, you're a lady. Congratulations. 
If I'm a lady, then I suppose I must. Well, that's all it took. <laughs> Assigning Rika's gender for her. <laughs> Today's Rika's gender is spin the wheel. <laughs> Rika-chan, appearing to be satisfied with being considered a lady, made her way to join Sadako in the hallway. Just as I breathed a sigh of relief, Rika-chan stopped suddenly and turned back toward me. Are you going to start playing baseball? It seems Rika-chan had noticed the bat. Yeah, just, you know, feeling a bit out of shape. Thought I'd just try practicing my swing, you know? I think it's wonderful you're taking care of your health. Has anyone told you you are weirdly mature for your age? Frequently. It's almost like you've had to, like... Raise yourself without parents around, huh? <laughs> she was talking like an old lady, despite her appearance. <clears throat> After saying that, Rika-chan started to leave again, but stopped and looked back at me once more. Please don't lose that bat. Seems she already knew I took it out of someone's locker. No name on the locker door. I didn't know whose bat it was, but I would be borrowing it until they complained. The Toshi? It's a mystery. Did they just leave his locker? It wouldn't be for long, just until the gym storage shed was opened. After quickly changing into the tracksuit, I checked the time. I still had plenty of time before class began because I came so early. Or what if it's Rika's bat? <laughs> Rika's actually really good at baseball, <laughs> turns out. Took the bat in one hand and went out to the schoolyard. That was a course to practice my swing. I needed to make it known I would always have a bat on me so I could practice my swing. At some point, the sunlight had become even stronger. Disregarding my classmates as they made their way to school, I took my position in the shadow of the school building. I wasn't the academic type, and I wasn't much of an athlete either. I might get muscle pain if I just suddenly started swinging. I should at least start out with some warm-ups. I doubt anyone would think I was doing something out of the ordinary. Which was the exact opposite of my actual mental state. I gripped the bat and swung lightly. The bat was by no means light. The weight would make it a reliable weapon when I needed it to be. Of course, I could only pray that the moment I needed to use this as a weapon would never come. Just carrying it around could deter attacks against me. At least that's what I hoped. <laughs> Pretty familiar swing sound effect. I was going to say, that swing sound is very familiar, huh? Huh? Hey, Chan, what are you doing? Being bombarded with such a hysterical voice, I jumped. Ah! Whoa, Keichi-kun, are you on the baseball team? The baseball team. It was Rena and Mion. I was surprised to hear you went off ahead. What are you doing, Kei-chan? Oh, can't you tell by looking? I'm practicing my swing. For the championship, you can say it's part of my diet if you want. Diet? Kei-chan, are you really that fat? Bet you didn't know. I actually have a beer belly. It's plump and it jiggles. P plump and jiggles? Is that cute? Rena, you don't have to imagine something weird like that. It's fine. <laughs> to disrupt Rena from imagining something that vulgar, I ruffled her hair messily. Well then, hope you make it to regionals at least. This old man will cheer you on. Regionally speaking, it seems that Oshima High is pretty strong. They say their southpaw, Kamehida-kun, is amazing. Good luck! Seems they I made me out- I secretly know everything about high school level baseball. Yeah, that's really cool that you know everything about high school level <laughs> baseball. Person whose locker we just stole that from. <laughs> Trans. Rena. Theory. Ah! <laughs> it just makes sense. <laughs> Seems they made out as some kind of local prodigy, but oh well. Well, if I really did make it to the championship, it would be a cinch. After all, I'd be the pitcher and the catcher. I'd pitch the ball, run past that ball I just threw, and change over to being the catcher in a burst of super incredible explosive speed. <laughs> I laughed dryly at the ludicrous image. Coming back to my senses, I smashed the bat against the ground. Damn it! What am I laughing at? Ugh. I pounded the ground over and over. With each impact, the reverberation traveling through the bat stung my hands. If they make me smile like that, I'll... I'll... Ugh. Don't allow anyone close to me. Don't trust anyone. No matter how many times I tell myself that, if they made me smile like that, I'll... Ugh. I already knew quite well that there were demons dwelling within my smiling friends, but I just couldn't believe it. To that kind of split personality really exist? Like how Rena confessed to the doctor, were they simply being p possessed by Oyashiro-sama? 
In other words, did a supernatural being like Oyashirosama really exist? And was it possessing everyone to try and kill me? Yeah, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? If only everyone were actually my friends all along and everything was just Oyashiro-sama's fault. Man, I, can you imagine playing Umineko second? I know, right? Could you? Could you imagine someone who had first experienced Higurashi? The game that came out first. The game that came out first. And that then proceeded to do, I don't know, a lengthy Umineko Let's Play. Yeah. After having first experienced Higurashi. Yeah, I can't imagine how that would be for anyone. <laughs> There's just a lot of things that feel like thematical refrains in the two works, yeah? <laughs> Again, we won't go into specifics because I don't want to spoil stuff about that game for people who haven't, um, for people who haven't played it. But there, there is certainly a lot of um, phrases, a lot of ideas that seem to come up frequently in both works. You damned fool, Keiichi Maibara. Come on now. I yelled out, drawing all the power from the pit of my stomach and raised the bat violently into the air. Stop being so soft. As I screamed out with all my might, I beat the metal bat into the ground over and over. Which again... Pretty normal. Pretty normal. <laughs> very, very normal. Just imagine his friends watching him do this now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, don't worry, I'm practicing my swing. Smashing the ground violently with a bat. <laughs> you sh- Keiichi. Dear God. <laughs> with every impact, my weakness was being beaten down. Smash. Forget. Smash. <laughs> don't be soft. Smash. Know your enemy. Smash. Like hell, I would let them kill me. My shoulders heaving up and down from my ragged breathing. I heard the first bell ring just as I calmed down. Keiichi, I don't think baseball is a full contact sport. Not the way I play it! <laughs> I gasped with a sudden realization. That was the final bell. As I felt all the tension drain from me, I let out a deep breath. My mind was in a muddled state for much of the entire day, but... I didn't fall asleep like I was awake, but it didn't feel like I was asleep either. I couldn't say it felt especially comfortable, but I felt a kind of relief that the sanctity of the school part of my daily life had yet to be violated. How long would I have to keep on living like this? I could only grit my teeth and bear with it as this living hell slowly gnawed away at me. You just kind of passed an entire day in a fugue state there, huh? Yeah, I like how it's not like, oh, this is a visual novel, so we're going to wipe to the end of the day. It's explicitly like, I just had a fucking fugue state. Yeah, I just kind of dissociated for an entire school day, and it felt pretty weird and uncomfortable. Hope I don't have to live like this forever. Anyway, let's get on with the day. Jesus Christ, Keiichi. Keiichi-kun, come on. Remember, remember, the real enemy is a lack of social services. <laughs> It's club time. Club time. The sound of Rena's voice brought me back to my senses. Come on. Come on, Kei-chan. Stop spacing out. Bring your desk. Your desk. Everyone was moving their desks together as usual. That's right. It was happy fun club time, but I had no intention of taking part. I haphazardly stuffed the contents of my desk into my bag as I prepared to go home. It was a weak-handed gesture to avoid having to actually say I'll be going home now. What's this, Kei-chan? You planning on going home right away again? Mion sounded quite disappointed. I'm... I'm just not out. I'm just not in the mood. Could you let me be for a little while? The tone of words that spilled from my mouth matched Mion's disapproving glare. I felt like the air in the room had dried out. Sadako looked like she was about to say something, but perhaps dissuaded by the mood, she swallowed her words and stayed silent. No one said a thing. I took that to mean that I could leave if I wanted. But the collective gaze of the four of them, like the tiny pins used to mount an insect on display, held me in place. Rena was the one who cut through the heavy mood. Keichi-kun, you just didn't like playing with girls, I guess. I, I guess. Mean, like, how else do you think they're going to take it, Keichi? <laughs> she said it in such a melancholic tone that it sent a wave of pain racing through my heart. If this pain was going to kill me, I wanted it to be the soft part of me that could still feel pain. I tore up my chest, violently tearing out the pins that held me in place. That's not it at all! 
I'd only be hurting myself by saying anything more, so I swallowed my words. Cutting things off there, I turned away and exited the classroom. They didn't speak a word to me as I left. It was a long, dull trip back home, but I didn't lose focus. I firmly squeezed the grip of the bat, which was already soggy from sweat. Realizing that, I wiped it down with my sleeve. If something were to happen, I wouldn't want it to be slippery. Since this morning, I'd be as become especially sensitive to the presence of cars. Even while walking, my ears pricked up and sought out threatening sounds and presences that could be closing in, and that was why I could hear it. Without a doubt, there were footsteps. Those Footsteps had matched up perfectly with mine for a while now. From what I could sense, it was just one person. But I had no intention of being careless. Did they intend to follow me like that car this morning until we were in a good location to assault me? No, it's Rena who's worried about you, you absolute... I'm torn between being angry at him and being like, he's clearly not well. I shouldn't be angry at him for this because he's not making great decisions. He needs help. And then it wasn't a good idea to keep walking like this. I stopped walking and looked back. The wooded path crowded with trees responded with silence, as if there was no one there to begin with. But I wouldn't be fooled. I was certain footsteps were following me. Oh, even better! You're just imagining it now. And just as I stopped, the footsteps stopped as well. Meaning the person following me wanted to keep their distance. That was without question proof that I was their target. I held my breath, waiting for that presence to panic and start moving again. The trees rustled with the sound of the wind. The Higarashi also joined in on the dissonant chorus, trying to throw my focus into disarray. Had five minutes passed, or had I been like this for a whole thirty? It was so hard to breathe that I might have suffocated. It seemed I would be the first one to panic. Without a doubt, he was lurking in the shade of that tree with bated breath. Then I'd make the first move! I fixed my grip on the bat. I raised it up to my shoulder to be ready to swing at any time. Hey! I know you're there! With all my might, I screamed at whoever was hiding in the shade of the trees. But the presence in the shade didn't budge. Until the moment I found them, they had no intention of revealing themselves. I know already! I know you're there! I screamed out angrily at them again, but even still they didn't move at all. Then I'll just go over there myself. <laughs> With all due vigilance, I approached step by step. Stepping into the tree's shadow, I saw a human figure there. That figure was curled up like a small animal. Who else was it going to be? <laughs> Who else was it going to be? Rena! When she realized I had found her, her expression softened. She seemed apologetic, but wasn't going to speak a word. Did you have some business with me? I wouldn't accept that silence and scream the question at her. N not really. It's just, uh... Rena was in a panic with tears welling up in her eyes, but it was obvious that she had been following me. What about the club? Since you're not... I'm not... Well, that shouldn't matter. Don't mind me and just play, all right? But I'm just worried about you. See? They're literally just worried about... <laughs> Thinking about how I'd been acting up until now, it wasn't hard to imagine my behavior could have been perceived as strange. Yeah! <laughs> Give the man a cookie, he's learning. <laughs> so Rena was concerned. At a quick glance, that's how it would seem, but I wasn't going to let my guard down that easily. Even if that was really the case, she still wouldn't have to do something like try and tail me. She could have called out to me when I was leaving and gone right out with me. But Rena didn't do that. She kept her distance from me and matched my walking speed. Because she saw you acting all angry and banging a bat into the ground <laughs> for like however long before school started. They're worried about you and they're scared of you. Keiichi! I'm gonna feel really, really bad if I'm actually completely wrong about this and he's his paranoia is just <laughs> it's like oh no actually yeah it is they're, they're all out to get you and I'm like this is just I can't read this right now as anything other than like tragedy 
This is horrifying. I want to I want to help him. He's <sighs> On top of that, she matched the sound of her footsteps and deviously tried to hide her presence from me. And after she realized I noticed she was there, she held her breath as if she, as she tried hiding from me. She wore a timid expression that would force me to take pity on her, but without a doubt, she was tailing me. Yeah, and see, it's this kind of logic that will absolutely lead him to dismembering Rena while she just stares sadly at him, <laughs> not saying a word. That's, it's what's going to happen. I, I hate this. I hate this. This sucks. I hate every moment of this. God but that, damn it. But now you have to wonder, like, how far gone is he? Is that is that going to happen in this scene? Is that going to happen at the very end of this arc? Is it's that going to happen, happen in, in a couple arcs from now? We just don't know. It's yeah. Is it going to happen at all? Maybe I, he'll get over it. <laughs> Maybe his friends will help him. My guess is, if we see that scene, it will happen towards the end of this arc. And I have a meta reason for thinking that. Hmm. The meta reason for thinking that. And it's not related to an outside knowledge of the game. It's that this was the very first R07 release, right? If it sucked, there might not have been a second one. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta have you gotta have some impact. Exactly, you gotta, a number of blunt impacts. With when Uman Echo came around, they could afford to take their time because they knew there was going to be more of it, right? Yeah. But uh, with th- this was the first one. If it just didn't sell, would there have been a second? I don't know. If it was me and it was my first release, I would want to make sure that there was a an impactful resolution that if it wound up ending there, I would have been okay with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. An impactful resolution so you don't strike out. Exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just got that one D20 gag now of naming all the genres of slash metal, clash metal, thrash metal, crush metal, crush metal, <laughs> Punch metal. <laughs> Stop following me. Still glaring at Rena, I continued walking onwards. After I'd walked for a bit, she ignored my command and began walking again, so I yelled at her once more. I told you not to follow me! Uh, but my house is in the same direction. Then walk ahead of me. I'll start walking once I can't see you anymore. I moved out of the way and waved my bat violently to urge her forward. I'd like to go home together with you. Making a pitiful expression, she meekly squeaked out the words in a voice that she knew would cut into my heart. That agitated me to no end. I knew it was a lie. If you wanted to go home together, then you should have called out to me. Now you're just blurting out random lies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seemed the seething anger within me was written all over my face. Even without me saying anything, Rena had understood what I was feeling inside. If you get it, then go. I swung the bat, urging her again to take a walk. Rena looked back and forth between me and the bat and started walking hesitantly and then stopped again. Go on then. Hurry. I, I'm going, so please stop with the bat. It's it's scary. Rena guarded herself while pointing at me holding the bat. She may have realized that I wasn't planning on using this bat for baseball. I lowered the bat, but still guardedly opened the way for her. Go. There's no problem now, is there? Mm. There's nothing else she could prot- protest. She passed by me timidly so as not to set me off. And as I watched her pass by, she stopped completely after having barely moved at all. Hey! Don't stop! Then a powerful gust blew past us, barraging my face with dust. The dust got into my eyes and clouded my vision. While rubbing my eyes with my left hand, I swung blindly with the bat in my right, protecting the small opening I had presented. But Renna didn't even try to attack during that opening. Attack me? No, she had budged an inch. I could tell from the sound of her fluttering skirt in the wind. As our skirt settled, so did the silence, and at that moment the voice inside of me immediately warned me of impending danger. I was caught by surprise. The smell of the air had changed. Without me realizing it, the air around me suddenly felt like a calamity was about to befall me. 
It was like the air had suddenly become invisible concrete, like Rena and I were locked in this space. Rena didn't move an inch. Also unable to move, I stared at her back. Rena was the first to break the silence. Instantly, she altered her stance. I felt like I had just witnessed her shift from Rena into that other person who looks like her. But the voice was one I knew well, which filled me with a kind of bewildering pity. Carelessly, I felt relief upon hearing that pitiful voice. Uh, um, well, excuse me, but, um, can I ask you something? Too shy to even turn around, Rena squeezed her voice out desperately as she trembled. What? Uh, um, well, well, why do you have a bat, I wonder? I wonder? The question Rena asked was by no means unexpected. I can carry whatever I want. But, but you didn't have one up until today. Why so suddenly? It's all right if I decide to do something suddenly, isn't it? Is it strange that I have a bat? Because, Keiichi, you're not the kind of person to play baseball. It's weird. I couldn't tell what kind of answer she was looking for, and I was getting tired of answering her. I just suddenly got the urge to play baseball. That's it. Is that so weird to you? It's weird. She answered instantly, and that annoyed me slightly. I just suddenly wanted to play baseball, and I wanted to practice my swing, so I'm carrying around a bat. What's strange about that? Strange. Weird. Definitely. Why has Keiichi-kun also... <laughs> Your ramblings are starting to annoy me. Is it that strange for me to have an interest in sports? I tried to sound a bit more threatening to end the conversation. Until my suspicions about Rena were cleared, I had no obligation to answer her questions. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't get so angry. Rena still didn't turn around and spat out the words of apology one after the next. Just one last thing. Tell me one last thing. I don't feel like talking anymore. Hurry up and go! I yelled loudly at her, causing her to flinch like she had been struck. Seeing her in such a pathetic state caused my heart to ache sorely. But even though she was afraid, she stubbornly kept herself from moving. Before I was able to threaten her again, Rena asked her final question. What? Why is that bat the same, too? What did she mean by the bat was the same? I had no idea what she was talking about. What are you saying? I mean, why is even the bat the same? I don't understand what you mean at all! Say it clearly! Even still, Rena didn't turn around. After inhaling deeply, she screamed. I mean, why is even the bat the same as Satoshi-kun's? Satoshi... being... Huh? Upon hearing that name out of the blue, I became dumbfounded for a brief moment. By Satoshi, did she mean the student who transferred out last year? No, that... couldn't be. Rena had tried to cover it up by saying he transferred, but... Uishi-san had told me quite clearly that he was missing. He was the student who sat at my seat up until last year. He was believed to have been demoned away by oyashiro samas curse. I didn't know the details about his disappearance. The aunt he lived with was killed the night of the Watanagashi by a drug addict, and not long after that he suddenly vanished and was now missing. That Satoshi and I were... What? My gaze fell to the bat in my hands. Could it be? Satoshi Hojo. It was a bit difficult to see, but that was what was written on the white tape at the end of the bat. <laughs> I see. So this was Satoshi's bat. Oh. This... This was Satoshi's bat. <sighs> well, since no one was using it, I borrowed it. That's not a problem, is it? That's not it. The way Rena said that made it seem like this bat was something that should never be touched. Like it was some sort of offering at a shrine or a memento of the deceased. I could only stand there perplexed and unable to respond. Rena continued speaking without waiting for a reply. Why is it? Why is it? 
that you're doing the exact same thing Satoshi Kun did when it happened to him. Ooh. Rena was talking about more than just the bat belonging to Satoshi. It was the same with Satoshi Kun. He joined a baseball team, but he didn't really like baseball. And what does that have to do with me? Satoshi Kun also suddenly started walking around with a bat one day. He joined a team, but he wasn't the type to play sports. What about it? I closed my mouth before I could say that aloud. Listen carefully, Eiji. Rena is trying to tell us something important. Satoshi Kun also one day came to school all by himself all of a sudden, just like Keiichi Kun. Then, one day, he suddenly started practicing his swing, just like Keiichi Kun. Then one day, he suddenly began carrying the bat around with him, just like Keiichi Kun. Then one day, he suddenly... Uh, then one day, he suddenly... What? Rena had swallowed her words. Rena's sudden silence brought a hush back to the surrounding area. It was then that I could finally digest the content of the entire conversation. She was saying my chain of actions was exactly the same as Satoshi's. What was the meaning of this? Up until just now, I'd forgotten all about him. I never paid much thought to him in the first place. Not only that, I didn't even know anything of what he'd done. My actions today should have been my own creation after all the planning I had done. But they had been the exact same as his? And Satoshi? No, more importantly, if both of us acted the same way, then there was a really good possibility that what happened after would be the same. <laughs> Retta, that day... What happened to Satoshi? Rena knew. She knew what became of him. No, forget about what happened to a guy in the past. Rena knew what was going to happen to me. Eh, answer me, Rena. What happened to Satoshi? With that, I grabbed Rena's shoulder violently and forcibly turned her around to face me. To face her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. I told you, Kei Chikun. It was that person I didn't know. At least it definitely, definitely wasn't the Rena Ryugu I'd been talking to up until now. The voice just now didn't have a trace of the trembling or emotion that it had before. The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carelessly was unsurpassed. That gaze pierced like a cold needle. The smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out by a knife. Chills went down my spine. My mind froze under a layer of rhyme. Both of Rena's eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. As if to remind me of the fear from that time before, Rena brought her face close to mine. So close that I could feel her breath. Her face had filled my entire field of vision. And then her sharply shaped lips grew even sharper. Like the curve of a crescent moon, she grinned. I told you, Kei Chikun. After a short pause, Rena repeated the same words again. Satoshi-kun, you see. Transferred out. Transferred, meaning... What? What Rena meant must have been some new definition of transfer that I was previously not aware of. My throat and lips dried up. I couldn't even acknowledge what I had just heard. All I could do was swallow down my own saliva. It would seem that Rena saw that as a nod. She pulled her gaze back and spryly stepped back two, three paces. As she did, my legs gave out and I fell to my knees pathetically. Rena and me on my knees underneath her emotionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight indeed. Seeing me in that pathetic state, she neither scoffed at me nor held out her hand. But I could neither stand nor escape with her gaze shooting through my eyes. There was undoubtedly a metal bat in my hand. But right now, it was useless to me. I was like a fly caught in her web. Heavy sweat beaded all over my body. I could feel it dripping from my skin. But you won't, will you, Kei Chikun? Rena finally released me from that cage of time after what felt like an eternity. But a question was missing something important. It was incredibly vague. Once again, I swallowed hard, urging her on. D do what? What did she not want me to do? Transfer. <laughs> uh... 
this is getting scary and uncomfortable, but in the sense that, like, I keep feeling more and more sorry for the people around Keiji. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's also clearly got, like, anger problems and stuff, right? Or or maybe not in general, but something is, like, he, he something has caused him to, like, he's clearly not in control of how his emotions are uh, and, and how his emotions are moving him right now. Yeah. Satoshi and I had what? All my well-planned actions throughout the day turned out to have been nothing more than a reenactment of what he had done. Satoshi, had he really been in the same situation as I was now? The friends he had gotten along with had changed suddenly and for no reason, at least not that I had noticed, planned to kill him? And then, fearing for his life as I am, he got a bat to protect himself and carried it around every day to practice his swing. And then one day, suddenly, he transferred. Or, he just got really into baseball and transferred because he wanted to play baseball. <laughs> or he transitioned. <laughs> Transferred. I don't know. This is putting more holes in my Satoshi's Rena theory, which was already pretty, uh, pretty shoestring. <laughs> but imagine, though. Imagine. Imagine. She's just trying to be like, hey, can I help you crack that egg? <laughs> my blood went cold, causing a prickling sensation to course through my veins. Starting near my heart, it radiated outwards from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, chilling every part of me without recourse. What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Was Satoshi still at wherever he transferred to? Was he the only one who would be able to understand me? Would he be able to tell me why it all ended up like this? More importantly, where did he transfer to? What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Before I knew it, I was at my front door. The frigid knob was hard to turn. Was no one home? It wasn't that odd of an occurrence. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the single key attached to my fur seal keychain. I stepped into the entryway. And just as I was about to take off my shoes, a chill ran down my spine. Someone had entered right behind me. Like a classmate messing around, standing right up against my back. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Had to be my imagination. Logically speaking, it was impossible for someone to be able to hide their presence within my personal space all the way through the door. But there was undoubtedly someone behind me. Hey now. Hey now, Keiichi. How do you know they're there even though they're behind you? Because I could hear the sound of flowing hair. There's no other reason I'd hear that sound. That was the presence. Because I could hear the sound of them blinking. Keiichi Maibara, there's no way you could hear that. It was mostly instinct than anything else that was warning me of that presence. Common sense was just telling me that it was just my imagination. It was just my imagination. There was no one behind me. I began to erase the mental image of an eerie figure standing behind me, but at the same time I asked myself, if there was nobody, then what was I feeling? As an uncomfortable sensation crawled up my spine, actually... Wouldn't it be better if there was someone there? If there was no one there, when you turned around, would you be able to accept that? I'd be able to answer all those questions just by looking behind me. But I didn't have enough courage to even do that simple task. All right. I could try speaking to them. The person behind me might answer me, after all. It was a random thought. I didn't care how I went about it, just so long as I didn't have to turn around. If I'd calmed down and thought about it, I would have known that would have solved everything. Who, who is it? Spoke in such a hoarse, broken voice that I couldn't believe it was my own. I could almost feel them contemplating their response. I felt that there's no way I should be able to do that. Calm down, Gagey. It's all in your head. That time, I was certain that I heard it. As if hesitantly trying to answer my inquiry, I was certain I could hear the sound of someone inhaling. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it clearly. It was a girl. A young 
girl. I didn't know who, but a tiny speck of courage in me, however reckless it was, inspired a primal yet fitting solution to this current predicament. A scream. All the force in my body released from my lungs and through my throat, ceasing all thought processes in my head, suppressing all my thoughts and emotions, I began to collapse like a house of cards, somehow managing to twist my body and look back as I did so. It was definitely there. Right there. Someone was there. Until the moment I turned around, until I brought the area behind me into my field of vision, they were definitely there. Falling face up, my eyes traced the remnants of the presence suspended in the empty space. And then I sneezed at an inopportune moment. (laughs) It couldn't be. They were invisible. They they looked like they weren't there, but they were actually still standing there. As I screamed, all the emotions I was holding back burst free in a violent wave. However, I was decidedly calm as my emotional dam collapsed. The turbulent wave of pent-up emotions was skillfully diverted into a torrent of aggression. That emotion was definitely required to extricate myself from the bizarre situation happening right in front of me. In my state of heightened lucidity, I entrusted my body to the fury. Heightened lucidity, huh? Heightened lucidity. Yeah, that's a great... Sure, Uh, buddy. Something's heightened. Not sure if it's lucidity. Ugh. Yeah, something's lucid here, if you know what I mean. (laughs) The metal bat held firm in my right hands as if drawn there by a magnet. A mid-level sweep would be the hardest attack to dodge. I remembered reading about something like that from a book about swordmanship or something. I brandished my will to fight. The afterimage of that amalgamation of mental flash to... Metal. The afterimage of that amalgamation of metal flashed as it swung from left to right, beating against the entryway. The bat slammed into the right wall, the tip rebounding violently. Very calmly, I transferred the force of the rebound into a sweep to the left. Now you're just destroying your own house! (laughs) Yeah, fuck my house! The door of the shoe cupboard was split into pieces. Those two swings whiffed through empty space, but they seemed to have a great psychological impact on the enemy. I could feel the panic emanating from that space. I can feel some panic emanating, but I'm not sure it's coming from that yeah, space, Keichi, per se. Keichi, I... My dude, do, I feel like... <sighs> I'm just uncomfortable now. <laughs> this is just... This is just... Really difficult to continue reading. Knowing that this is Keiichi likely either having delusions or having some kind of mental break. And it's like, there's nothing we really can do about it. It's just, god damn Keiichi. The attack wasn't the only thing required. I I extracted the bat from the cupboard as it was embedded and screamed as I spun my entire body around in a large arc. My scream shook the air, imbuing my ferocious swing with even more destructive power. Creak. Crack! Without mercy or restraint, my violent strike with certainly fatal force behind it shattered the top of the cupboard. None of my attacks struck the enemy, but my ferocity had certainly seemed to impact them. Breathing heavily, my entire body soaked in sweat. The invisible enemy, there but not there, dispersed. When I was certain the enemy had retreated, I locked the front door and latched the chain. No way had it only feigned retreat and was now inside my house? Once again, I channeled my aggression and searched the house for the presence. But it was gone. I had succeeded in fending it off. At that moment, the tension drained from my body, and I let out a deep sigh of relief. All the emotions I had been holding back chaotically merged together and began to flood out. A hodgepodge of fear, accomplishment, and disbelief all mixed together and began to flow through my body. Unable to deal with each individual feeling, I beat them all back with the strongest. Exhaustion. Even in this moment, I remained composed. Did you? Did you? Are you composed, Keiji? (laughs) 
I'm not upset. I'm wondering more and more if they had to move out here because of something he did. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. <sighs> Checking that all the doors throughout the house were locked. Went up to my room on the second floor and closed the curtains. Great, your parents won't think that's strange at all. I straightened my back and tilted my head back a little. And after clearing my mind of all idle thoughts, I managed to calm down even more. What was that at the front door? There was definitely something there. Thinking about it, maybe it was just an apparition I dreamt up in my confused state, but I didn't really think that was the case. <sniffs> calm down, Keiichi Maibara. Compose yourself. But no matter how calmly I thought about it, what just happened wasn't a figment of my imagination. It was obviously a supernatural phenomenon, and without a doubt, something was behind me. It wasn't some sort of illusion I saw amidst my confusion and disorientation. Proof? I had just one piece. When I asked, who is it, they inhaled as if they were about to answer. That sound had clearly reached my ears. The situation I was in right now was still unclear. Either I'd been possessed by the supernatural phenomenon known as Oyashiro-sama's curse, or this was a ruse by the villagers who believed in it and were imitating it. Either way, their motives were unclear. The roundabout way it had been done was also still a mystery. If it was perpetrated by humans, then that would mean admitting that it was Rena and the rest of them doing it, but it would be solvable. Oishi-san and the rest of the police would surely arrest my enemy. But if it was a manifestation of Oyashiro-sama's curse, then I wonder what would happen. Oishi-san was very clearly declared that curses didn't exist. And at that time, those words were pretty dependable. But as things were now, with the rising possibility that the perpetrators were not human, he suddenly seemed quite unreliable. If I told Oishi-san this was the work of Oyashiro-sama's curse, what would happen? I couldn't imagine his reaction, but it would go without question that a void would expand rapidly between myself and him. With me having so few allies to begin with, and not being able to confidently declare whether or not this was a curse, there was no merit to doing that. I'd better keep the facts of what happened just at the doorway to myself. It would be better if I didn't add what happened here to the memo behind the clock. There was still the ever so slight possibility that I was actually confused when I thought it was composed and was going berserk in the entryway. How wonderful that would be if that was really what happened. I would be able to refute Oyashiro-sama's curse once and for all. But if I denied the curse, then that would mean admitting that Rena and the rest were perpetrators. Would it? <gasps> He's got himself into like this horrible double bind here where he believes there's only two options and either one leads to something horrible when there's a clear third, third option, option of maybe I'm, I'm not well. Not well. <laughs> oh no. And there's at least three options. Yeah. But again, that's another that's another um sign of that kind of um that kind of depressive thinking. Yep. Of getting caught trapped between two ideas and not being able to see other options. Convincing yourself that you only have bad choices. If I said that Rena and the rest weren't the perpetrators, then that would mean believing in the curse. But by denying both of those, I would be admitting that I was losing it. The three options from which I couldn't choose became a trilemma of sorts. They mixed together and formed a whirlpool in my mind and making my head spin. Once again, I straightened myself and leaned my head back slightly to cool myself down. Calm down, Keiichi. Accept what has actually happened as reality. Stop thinking of anything more than that. Just accept everything that's been put before you. <laughs> I couldn't help but think of it. How wonderful it would be. If it turned out I was delirious and everything up until now was just a figment of my imagination. Oyashiro-sama's curse wouldn't exist and I would still be the bestest buddies with Rena and the rest. I... No? If it didn't exist, then you would have just irreparably damaged your friendship with all of them. <laughs> I would have to be crazy. That was the first time in my life I'd ever wished for such a thing. The phone rang noisily downstairs. Generally, there were no calls for me, so I never really answered the phone much, but since my parents weren't here, I had no choice. I squirmed off the bed and went downstairs. Hello, this is the My Bar residence. 
Keiichi, this is Mom. I, intuiti- I intuitively had a bad feeling about this, because I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy some things. So I took the initiative. What's up? I don't mind having instant noodles for dinner. There's still a lot of them, you know. The other day, we went out as a family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different kinds, actually, but they refused since the individual packs were expensive. So instead, I got a whole case of the mega-sized pork bone and ginger-flavored ones I liked. But my parents don't like strong flavors and didn't touch any of them, so the cupboards were still full of them. So you see, there really isn't a need to go shopping, right? Keiichi, I'm not asking you to go shopping. Both Mommy and Daddy have to go to Tokyo right now because of work. Huh? Right now? This was really... abrupt. No, we're already here. We left this afternoon. It's quite a distance to Tokyo from Hinamazawa. Gunning at a full speed down the highway would still take six hours. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highway, they likely took the train. Would have taken even longer. I'm thinking you might understand, since you heard us speaking last night, but it has to do with Daddy's contract. Right now, things aren't going so smoothly. Now that she mentioned it, I did remember that they talked all the time about how his job prospects weren't looking so good. Daddy is really sensitive about things like this, so if we leave things as they are, it will affect his work. Part of my father's particular fragile artistic personality, his emotions changed as easily as the fall sky. You could also just say he couldn't take criticism. But something like that can't be done over the can be done over the phone, right? Keiichi, this is your father's job, so can you support him a bit, please? Anyway, it's just faster to talk about it in person, so there wouldn't be any misunderstandings. As their son, there was nothing more I could say once they started talking about work. So we'll be back tomorrow night. Keiichi, will you be fine on your own? Not like I'll die or anything. Keiichi, you shouldn't speak so lightly of dying. If there's something troubling you, just talk to us. I believe Mommy will be able to help out. Yesterday I did bring up if I died rather abruptly, so I suppose they were a little worried. But really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. But I didn't plan on dying. At least not while I still knew nothing. I would never allow it. I won't die. I won't. I'll survive even if I have to gnaw my leg off. Yeah, don't do that either. See you then. Tomorrow morning, make sure to wake up and eat your breakfast. And don't forget to take a bath and brush your teeth. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went off to Tokyo for business meetings, but Tokyo was far away. They normally did things by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance. It never happened this suddenly. Either it really is just a business meeting that they had an emergency thing, or they saw their son acting like that last night, and they're like, we need some help, and I, we need to get a professional. Mm. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange or rather unnatural. Anyway, I only needed to reorganize, recognize the reality of the situation. Tonight, I was the only one in the house. That when my parents came back from work, I'd be gone. Missing. Vanished. <laughs> What He's you... made some really rapid leaps of yeah, logic here. I was going to say, here. you've made some gr- incredible leaps of logic there. Looking back on the series of events of the previous five years involving Oyashiro Sama's curse, it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late, wasn't it? I didn't think it was good that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It was the same as broadcasting to the enemy that my parents were gone and this was their chance. First I ran to the living room, flicked on the lights, and turned the TV to a reassuring volume. Next was the study. I similarly turned on the lights and some music. With this, from the outside, it would look like my parents were here. Once again, I went through the house, checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the veranda and the laundry still hanging out there, I went pale. That would have made it too obvious. I needed to take it down. I snatched down the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Huh. The garage! They hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone up to Okonomiya Station. The garage was empty, wide open, and in plain sight, this was not good. I panicked and rushed out the back to close the normally open garage door. Should be fine now. Oh, shit! I needed to get the paper. Mom always got the paper. Since they left in the afternoon, the evening paper was still out there. My premonition was correct. I pulled out everything from the mailbox, dropped it in the entryway. And with this, for sure, this time, it would be fine. 
come to think of it, leaving the cupboard busted like that for my little freakout was kind of bad. I'll just say I tripped and fell, and the bat was holding smashed into it. Even so, just leaving it in its current state wasn't good. I should clean it up a little before Mom got back and scolded me. I remembered it, that there was a broom and dustpan in the closet, as I was going to get them, the phone rang once again. Hello, this is the My Bar Residence. Oh, is this Kate? She Shikun, is your mother around? Uh, she isn't here at the moment. You idiot, Kate Shimaibara! Don't reveal that your parents are gone! You can follow up still, calm down and take care of it. Think she'll be back soon, though. That wasn't a good response either. Now they might say they'll call again or to tell them to call them when she comes back. Then that's fine. It wasn't anything important. Well then, sorry for the bother. The scenario I feared didn't play out, eliciting a sigh of relief. That call was fortunate in more ways than one. I'd have to deal with more telephone calls coming in from my parents tonight. I was somehow able to deal with the phone call just now, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improvisation. I needed to make up a good story to explain that my parents weren't home, but couldn't an- my parents were home, but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They were making tempura and couldn't step away. Uh, that wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Was that going to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on the way back to my room with the phone ringing once again. Like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick it up, but I knew I had to. They'd suspect my parents weren't here. I should just have taken the phone off the hook under the pretense I didn't realize that it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted up the receiver. Hello? I stopped announcing that this was the Maibara residence. I had no reason to be kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. But unlike my uncouth voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. <laughs> Hello there, my apologies for calling so late. This is Oishi from the Okonomiya Bookstore. Oishi, son? <laughs> oh, hey, is that you, May Bera san Good evening, good evening. I'm glad to hear you're doing so well. Wait, wait, just a moment, please. I grabbed the portable handset and rushed up to my room with it. It was the same no matter where I was since there was no one else home, but I wanted to be in a spot that felt just a bit safer when speaking on the phone with him. Sorry, sorry for the wait. How are things going? Any change since then? Since then, when was that exactly? There was something about the brazen way he talked that rubbed me the wrong way. Last time I spoke with him was two days ago. The day I stayed home from school, I met him on the way back to the hospital, and we headed into town for lunch and had a talk. And then after that, Rena and Mion came up to check up on me. Whenever I spoke with him, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. Today's phone call may well be found out by them as well. Hello, can you hear me, May Barasan? Huh? Oh, I'm, so- I'm sorry. Uh, what did you say? I asked if anything changed at the last time we spoke. There weren't no answers, so I got a bit worried. Uh, no. No, not really. The words stopped in my throat. There was a ton of stuff that had happened. All of it. Baffling. What should I talk about? I didn't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't ask now, I may never have another chance. This night when my parents weren't home, I had no guarantees I would make it through safely. Well, Oishi-san, it, it seems that someone is after me. Oh, really? It could all just be a coincidence, but that day I missed school when I was sick, two of them came to check up on me. And which two were those? Uh, Rena and Mion. They started asking about how I had lunch with you. Alright, and what next? Left me some mochi when they came to visit, but there was a needle inside of it. Fortunately, I somehow didn't swallow it. Could that have just been a threat? About that needle. It was just one of those common sewing needles you use all the time to hold the thread string through. Not that may bear a sand, the needle itself. That's evidence. It could be used as proof that they threatened you. Where's that needle now? Didn't I mention that? You did. All the way back, whatever. That's right. That's it. I dropped the receiver and rushed downstairs. When I tossed the mochi, I had overlooked it out of terror, but that needle was a valuable piece of evidence. I had certainly thrown the mochi needle at the wall together. If it was there, then it would be on the living room wall. My, prudulent, my prudent mother cleaned that living room wall, and there was not a trace of mochi left on it. Could it be that it dropped in the gap between the wall and the carpet? I frantically searched by running my palm along the carpet, but nothing turned up. 
I tried moving around the sofa and the desks, pulling up the carpet and flapping it around, but I couldn't find the needle. Did my mom clean up everything without noticing it? It was just two days ago. I don't didn't know what day they collected the burnable trash, but it may still be in the trash bin in the kitchen. I rushed into the kitchen, opened up the lid of the pail, poured out the contents. But even at a glance, I could tell it would be incredibly difficult to find the needle in this pile of trash. I was looking for a needle in a trash stack. <laughs> I know, I'll try running my hand through it. It was a bit gross, but I was looking for a needle, right? If I felt a small prick, I'd be able to find it. It was a pretty tactless method, but it was the quickest. I held my breath and started striking the pile of trash with my hand. Filth flew about. There was nothing more disgusting than this, but it was not the time to be concerned about such details. I continued on for a while, but nothing turned up. He really likes to con to contrive ways to be hitting stuff, right? Seems like it, maybe. There's a lot of anger in that. A lot of desire to be hitting things. I wanted to search more thoroughly, but I was still on the phone. I shouldn't keep him waiting for too long. Later, when Mom got back, I'd have to ask her if there was a needle. He sleeping and scribbing on the notepad affixed to the refrigerator with a magnet. Was there a needle? I scrawled the words with a red pen. Then I dashed back upstairs where I had been keeping him waiting for far too long. Hello? Oh, hello? How'd it go? I couldn't find it. It's really overwhelmed back then and... I see. It'd be great if you could find it. Keep it safe, alright? That's right, the needle wasn't the only incident. I had to tell him about this morning with the hit and run. Oh, also, Oishi-san, that isn't all. Actually, this morning... That van was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at the time. Did you see the license plate? I can search for it from here. God damn it! I just flipped out yelling at him back then, but I didn't look at the plate. What failures on my part with the needle and the plate number? I was so focused on just protecting myself that I let some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow, annoyed at how worthless I was. Sorry. Didn't know much more than it was a white van. Nothing to fret about, May Barrasan. Anyone would be shaken up after being hit. Guess all of this really isn't a coincidence, is it? <sighs> oh, Ishi-san started to hem and haw over the other end. I could imagine him folding his arms. Also, Rena is acting strange. And how so? What Rena said on the way home today, asking why I was so much like Satoshi-kun. Now I could say it with confidence. That Rena knew what happened to Satoshi. She knew that there was more to him than him just simply disappearing. Rena knows. She knows something regarding what happened to Satoshi. The kid who was demoned away last year. And what would that be exactly? She said I was the same as him. Said something to the effect, the way things are going, I'll end up with the same fate as him. The same fate, you say? Exactly what kind of fate did she say would befall you? She said, uh, transferring out. Transferring out, huh? She said, uh, Satoshi transferred out. So given how things are going with me, I'll transfer out, too. Oishi-san let out a stern sigh and grumbled loudly. <laughs> You'll note that indeed she said the exact opposite. She yeah. said, I hope you won't. Right. May Barasan, that's probably some sort of threat or maybe some type of warning. You're not helping! I'm trying to put myself in Oishi-san's shoes here. If I know this kid has a history of stuff like this, this isn't helping. If I genuinely think that he's in trouble, this still isn't helping. <laughs> I don't... I don't know what you're doing. I thought so too. At that point, I started to think. Would it be prudent to sum everything up that had happened until now as the machinations of some human perpetrator? Other than the theory of it being Rena and the others, I was left with the Oyashiro-sama's curse actually existing as the only other explanation. Of course, I couldn't tell that to him. Except that Rena's strange behavior could be proof of other scenario, either scenario. Whether it was Oyashiro-sama's curse being real, or everything being a part of a conspiracy committed by all the villagers, Rena was involved. Rena had to know something. Rena was suspicious. What exactly was Rena? I couldn't help but think that she was somehow involved with the prior string of mysterious deaths. I seem to recall that Oishi-san had admitted that he had dug into Rena's past a little. He was probably just downplaying it when he said a little bit. Meaning he had actually dug pretty deeply, most likely. I wanted to hear about Rena. I wanted to know what had happened at a previous school, among other things that were still unknown to me. If she was someone I should suspect... Not that. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight... I was alone in this huge house. 
Even though I said I couldn't count on them, I had lost the security I felt just by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There were no other residents close to the Maibara residence. No one would be able to hear anything, no matter how loud it was. I never felt as much resentment towards my father's artistic temperament and the fact that he had built this house in such a remote location as I did right now. I wondered if I would still be here by tomorrow morning. Wait, the doorbell. Yeah. And he's not. So I had to ask right now because I had no idea when the next chance would come. Um, Oishi-san, I have something I wanted to ask about. Please don't keep anything from me. Well, sure, ask away. Even though he was so far away on the other end of the line, this was the most reliable he had ever felt. I wanted to ask about Rena, about what happened at her previous school. Actually, regarding Rena's... I noticed a sound that had been going on for a while now. Since I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to it at first, but I finally realized it was the doorbell. The time was 7 o'clock. It was past the time the postman would be making a delivery, and past any sensible time for a neighbor to be visiting. I considered just acting like no one was home, but that wouldn't be good either. That would ruin all the work I put in making it look like my parents were home. I needed to answer the door. Hello, May Barasan. Uh, sorry, someone seems to be at the door. I'm gonna go see who it is. A guest? I see. My apologies. Should we end this phone call for now? That would be a problem. Oh no, I'll be back in a second. Do you mind if I just leave the phone on? It's fine, I don't mind. I dropped the handset on my bed and dashed down to the door. I needed to make up a good excuse to get them to leave. I had a hunch it was the lady who called right before Oishi-san did. In which case it would be one of the neighbors who's friends with my mom. I'll just say she isn't feeling well and went to bed early. That should be the easiest option. Be hard for her to ask me to wake up my mom if she's not feeling well, right? The bell continued to ring at regular intervals. If someone didn't answer after you rang the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, wouldn't you? Without moving the chain, I opened the door slightly and peered out at the visitor. A chill ran down my spine. I knew it. Somewhere, deep inside, I had prepared for this moment. I tried to escape by imagining it was the easiest person to deal with one of my mom's friends. Good evening. Hi, Renna. How you doing? How are you, how are you doing tonight, Renna? Are you, you, you good? You good? I, uh... <laughs> Getting some bad vibes. Retta. There shouldn't be any reason for Rena to come over at this hour. The timing also made me feel uneasy. Because it was just as I was about to ask Oishi-san about her. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence, but those unsettling words from Mion several days ago echoed back to me. There's nothing this old man doesn't know. Are you alone, Rena? Yeah. Seems that Mion wasn't with her, but that didn't change the situation at all. Why did you come here? Hey, Kei Chikun, I'd like you to open the door so we can talk. Can I come inside, I wonder? I wonder? It was true that speaking through a chain door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate. But, at my house, the chain has to be on at night. Don't worry about it. Mm, then it can't be helped, I guess. Rena pouted rather sadly. But she kept smiling, at least, and her effort to keep that smile up was quite pitiful. Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. What I really feared, more than the possibility that the hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain, was trusting her enough to remove it, and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain wasn't unlatched, even if it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by Rena. God damn it, more door latch shenanigans. <laughs> I thought we were done with locked room bullshit. <laughs> God damn it. Ugh. Since it didn't seem like I'd remove the chain from her silent urging, she appeared to give up on trying to get into the entrance way. Um, have you eaten yet, Kei Chikun? No, I haven't eaten. Since my mom wasn't there, dinner wouldn't be ready no matter how long I waited for. I laid down when I got home, was woken up by the phone, and didn't have a chance to eat since I used up all that time talking. I was going to have cup noodles in any case. I could just eat one whenever I wanted to. 
Uh, no, not yet. What about it? <laughs> Then, good. Look here, I brought a bunch of dishes. Rena held out a stack of boxes wrapped in a cloth.、Uh, if I could use your kitchen, I can heat up the miso soup and other stuff. It's fine. You, you don't need to do that. But, but there's a lot of tofu and vegetables in it. Does Kei Chi Kun not like that type of stuff, I wonder? I wonder. There's no way I wouldn't like that. I love miso soup with lots of ingredients white radish, carrots, burdock, root, and potatoes, dense and fibrous root vegetables. Yeah, that miso soup looks incredible. I also brought rice, so if you microwave it, you can eat it really quickly. Without a doubt. Rice needs miso soup. Stuffing rice down your gullet, sipping miso soup between ravenous bites. Oh, yes, how wonderful it is to be born Japanese. Also, I made some more pickles. I made sansai pickles this time. Before I had moved here to Hinamizawa, I scoffed at the mountain vegetables called sansai. But I was captivated by their charm the first time I tried them. Such a deep yet light flavor. The vegetables from the supermarket were tasteless and bland compared to these. If you had to describe them, then they were the vegetables for the uninitiated. To become an expert such as myself, you first had to partake of sansai. It was common knowledge around here that the Ryugu family's traditional pickles were wonderfully delicious. No matter what kind of pickles they were, they'd go so well with that fluffy white rice. And also, and also. Wait, there's more! So delicious, it just seems so delicious. Farewell to my unhealthy self who said he'd make do with cup noodles. Rena appeared to be in good spirits, and she was offering such a delicious sounding dinner. The stress evaporated from my gut, and hunger reared its voracious head. At the same time, my weariness of Rena suddenly dwindled. She did say she was alone, it shouldn't be a problem letting her inside, but the possibility that it was laced with poison still hadn't been ruled out. At that moment, a cold chill ran down my spine once again. I couldn't understand why such a sensation had occurred just then. But the voice inside me was sounding the alarm. This happy Rena, speaking of this charming dinner, was dependent on one premise. And that premise was that tonight dinner hadn't been made at my house, meaning it was under the assumption that my mom, who should be making it, wasn't here. At any normal household, seven o'clock would be around the middle of dinner time. My mom were here, we'd be eating dinner around this time as well. The fact that she brought over all the makings of a meal at this time was inherently strange. Unless she knew. Rena, did she? Did she know that my parents weren't home? But there was also the chance that this was a bluff. I had turned on the lights and a bunch of other stuff to make it seem like they were here. There was a chance that she was unsure if my parents were home. But if I had to wonder, the laundry, the garage, the evening paper, there were plenty of signs that them being hastily tidied up. It was hard to say that she didn't have a chance to determine if my parents were home or not. But there was no reason for me to confess that right now. I should try holding on to that fact as long as I could. First of all, the chain was still latched. As long as I didn't take it off, Rena wouldn't be able to do anything to me. I'm quite grateful, but dinner will be ready pretty soon. Huh? Is that so? Is that so? I know you went through all the effort and everything, but, well. Unable to think of a good way to refuse, my words trailed off weakly, but some of this could work. Oh. But some of this could work as side dishes, I think. I think. I'm sorry, we have more than enough already. My mom always makes quite a few sides. So, uh. Huh? You have side dishes? With a smile that bordered on a cringe, I dodged her questions apologetically, but the feeling I tried to ignore began creeping up my back again. I spoke as if my mom was setting down dinner right now, but it didn't mesh well with what Rena was saying. Rena was talking as if she was aware of some obvious fact. And that I was aware of it as well. So Kei Chi Kun can cook. What did you make, I wonder? Because your mom called Rena and was like, hey, my son's gonna eat fucking cup noodles for dinner. <laughs> could, you, could you do me a solid, please? Could you have his girlfriend come over and bring real food so he doesn't die of malnutrition? Right. No, well, it's not that. I. Rena had assumed out of nowhere that I had made the dishes. No, not so much that I had made them, but rather that my mom hadn't. Did you really make them, the side dishes? Did you, Kei Chi Kun? It wasn't me who made them, my mom did. She's making them right now. Hmm. 
So you see, I'm sorry, but I can't eat what you brought. Rena fell silent at that moment. And at that moment, I felt the light had suddenly disappeared from her eyes. How about I try guessing what Kei Chikun's dinner will be? It doesn't matter what I'm going to eat. Let's see. The conversation might appear natural at first glance, but Rena was firmly in control. It felt like I was being interrogated. Your dinner, I wonder, is it something that can be made with just hot water? Uh, hey, hey now, stop with the insults. Can't believe you belittle my mom's extravagant dinner like that. Tickets sold out, full capacity already, it's that amazing. I tried my best to put on a strong front, but I couldn't grit my teeth quite right. So instead I looked like someone who was borderline hysterical. But Rena showed no reaction whatsoever, even to that silliness. Kei Chikun, did your mother really leave you dinner? No, you see, she didn't leave me dinner. She's making it right now. It's almost time for dinner. Rena had taken that assertion of mine that my mother was home and making dinner right now and was completely ignoring it. I could tell that the more I panicked, the colder Rena became. A.K. Chikun. At that moment, an uncomfortable chill crept from the gap in the doorway. Is your mom home, I wonder? I wonder? I couldn't keep up the charade anymore. Rena... She knew full well that my parents weren't home, but I'd come too far to admit that now. Anyway, my parents were here, and we'd be having dinner soon. That was the situation I had concocted, so I answered. I told her she was here. She's here! She's here, of course! I could feel the humidity drying out from the surrounding air. Rena's eyes be were becoming even more frigid, piercing me with their gelid glare. Ooh, gelid's a great word. Yeah. Why? Gelid. Sorry, that that's like a that's like a word a day word. Oh yeah, that's huh? like a that's like a you don't get it on Wordle word. Yeah, like that like that that uh, you should, but like that's one that you just don't see often. Remember that one, <laughs> huh? B -b 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 what do you mean? I tried acting casual, but that facade was torn off me the instant I looked into Rena's eyes. That looked and informed me of Rena's response faster than she could open her mouth. Why have you been lying to me, I wonder? I wonder. I... I'm not... I'm not lying! That's a lie, isn't it? It's not a lie. Lies! Renner's outburst sent a jolt surging through my body. Renner and I were still separated by what few inches that slightly ajar but still chained door could afford. But despite that, I was still being cornered. My house, which I had considered a safe haven until now, had become more like a dark alleyway where no one could save me. Shall I guess your dinner, Kei Chikun? Let's see. I knew now that Rena had already known that my parents would not be here tonight, but it was still so strange that it had come to this. Even if she somehow knew my parents were at home, there was no way she'd be able to guess what I'd be eating tonight. But Rena said she'd guess. How could she guess it? How could she know it was instant? Cup noodles. That's right, isn't it? That I was going to eat. The cooking repertoire of a man who can't do housework is probably nothing but cu cup noodles after all. Looking at this statistically, it was the most probable answer. That didn't mean she was guessing. I... I don't think you'll be full with just noodles. I think having rice and stuff will definitely hit the spot. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. This was just a coincidence. Rena was just reading certain tells of mine. So the fact that she was interfere inferring what I was thinking alarmed me. But it wasn't as if she was actually reading my mind. You sure? Or was it? People keep responding to your inner monologue all the time, dude. It's just established at this point. <laughs> it's written all over your face. If it was being read, then she was a demon. Not a demon. Things like that. They couldn't possibly exist. Do you like them? Uh, do you mean noodles? No. Censored. Rena indicated the point my answer was addressing was wrong. What is the point of censoring that word? I wonder. I wonder. Her rebuttal was so short that I momentarily didn't understand the words Rena had spoken. Sorry, Rena, what did you say just now? Huh? About what? Just now, you asked me if there was something that I liked, didn't you? It was not long before I regretted how carelessly I'd pushed forward with that question. It was such a simple answer that was why I wasn't able to comprehend it. Pork bone and ginger flavor. I wondered how I appeared in the moments my mind went completely blank until the moment I was able to recover. Okay. So again, 
your mom called up your girlfriend and was like, my son is eating like trash. (laughs) (laughs) Even if she didn't, and you mentioned the pork bone and ginger stuff to your mother. So she could have mentioned it to Renna. Or Renna's been to your home times before and you said that you've gotten a whole bunch of it. It's not a stretch to say that she would have noticed that. Mm -hmm. There is nothing weird going on right now except for the lies (laughs) bit that you've been inserted into this. (laughs) <laughs> he's even established that it's his favorite flavor. Like, so he's probably told everyone about that. Mm, you talk mm, about mm, your mm. favorite foods with people. Mm. Like, come on, man. As my field of view began to distort slowly, swirling in a counterclockwise direction, I lost all sense of balance. Why do you know that? I didn't even deny it. That was the type of frenzied state I was in. How could Rena even know this? Not caring as I mashed my head against the door, I fixated my gaze on Renna, but she didn't even flinch when she saw me do that. I certainly did buy them. I bought a bunch at once. I bought a whole case. How could you know that? Why, I wonder. Quite strange, isn't it? Isn't it? How could you dodge the question at a time like this? The chain of the door suddenly were no longer protecting me. How do you know? Why do you know? Answer me! You bought them at 7th Mart, didn't you? A shiver ran up my spine. I tried covering it up with an angry facade. Like I said, why do you know that? I was behind you, following you the whole time. What? What are you saying? I couldn't understand why she was saying she'd been following me all this time. That's because Rena was right behind Kei Chikun's back the whole time. (laughs) <laughs> like that night? That night I was absorbed in my phone conversation with Oishi-san. I didn't even sense her being there, standing behind the door, behind me, standing there just like that. When Keiichi was picking out the noodles, I was watching the entire time. You picked out so many different flavors, didn't you? Then your mom got angry. If you were going to pick the expensive ones, then you should just pick one type, she said. Then Kei Chikun picked out that big box of pork bone and ginger flavor that he loves so much, didn't he? I like it too. Pork bone noodles. But I can never eat a whole big bowl myself. My brain was paralyzed, dulling my senses. It might have been a defense mechanism to diminish the fear I was feeling to non-traumatizing levels. With the fear being diminished, the fog enveloping my mind was cleared away. And then, I could understand what Rena was saying and started to put meaning behind her words. Even so, my fear hadn't subsided completely. It was like I was standing at the edge of a cliff, eyes closed so I didn't have to look down. It didn't actually solve any of the basic problems. I slowly took a step backwards, and as I withdrew, Rena advanced. So, Kei Chikun, can you open this? We can eat dinner together. I'm sure it's going to be delicious, so... Okay? Rena's pale, slender... Fingers squirmed through the crack in the door one at a time as if they had a mind of their own rattling the chain. If she had unlatched the chain from the door, a feeling of terror would have just exploded within me. But Rena didn't do that. She was simply imploring me to remove the chain. She was doing her hardest to light the fuse to the powder keg in my heart. Trying again and again. Clatter. Clatter. But it doesn't light. It doesn't light. Open up, Kei Chikun. Please, please go away. I beg you, please go away. How can you say something so mean, I wonder? I wonder. Please, go away. Just go away. Go away. The powder keg inside me finally went off. No smoldering, it just exploded. Oh, oh no. (laughs) Oh, oh shit. Uh, I think we finally just entered actual injury territory. I tackled the door. The force through the door had knocked Renna momentarily off balance. I couldn't hesitate here. Grabbed onto the doorknob with both hands, planted my feet firmly, and pulled with all my might. That slamming sound I so desired didn't happen. I could feel a tiny, disturbing bit of resistance keeping the door from closing. Yay! And the source of that was Rena's 
fingers. Each of those fingers was wriggling, squirming around like the tendrils of a carnivorous plant through the crack in the doorway. It hurts. It hurts, Kei kun It hurts. Ah. It wasn't a harsh shriek, but more of a yelp she was trying to keep back. Go away, go away, go away! I kept on pulling the door with all my might. I didn't even realize that if I didn't loosen my pull on the door, at least momentarily, Rena wouldn't be able to pull her fingers out, and that's why the door wasn't closing. It really hurts, Kei kun I'm sorry if I was messing around too much. Ah. I didn't care for one bit for her apology. No matter how much she apologized, it didn't change any of what she had done up until now. It didn't change anything. It hurts. It hurts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go away. Go away. Go away. She couldn't leave even if she wanted to because I trapped her fingers. Her white fingers had become deep red and were no longer even squirming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go away. Go away. Go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a woman. She's apologizing to me. Why don't you just forgive her, the person that she's talking to? Surely there's nothing that anyone has done that can't be forgiven. <laughs> and if it can't be forgiven, all the more reason to forgive them, right? Because there's nothing they can do anymore. <laughs> Gee, I wonder if that's thematic. Rena's apologies were occasionally twisted with pain, but like a broken record, she was intent on repeating it over and over. Go away. Go away. Go away. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I pulled on the door even harder. Finally, her fingers were somehow able to slip out from their imprisonment in the doorway. The moment that happened, the door closed soundly, and I could hear the thud of her falling on her butt on the other side. I locked the door immediately. I made a loud clunk, voicing my rejection to Reyna. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keiichi kun, I'm sorry. Open up. Keiichi kun. She leaned against the door, apologizing profusely and nothing else. To confirming that I was sufficiently sealed off from her, I tugged away from the en I charged away from the entryway. On the other side, I could still hear her echoing her apology. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those pitiful words, they would never be forever seeking my forgiveness. I didn't feel bad about this at all. But that wasn't out of any sort of malice. I just felt a hazy sense of relief that I was able to escape from her. Before, Mion had threatened me at this doorway, saying there was nothing she didn't know. Just now at the same place, Rena had told me the same thing. My feeble attempts to disguise the fact my parents were at home had served no purpose from the start. I should have just pretended to be out and not even opened the door. My meager plans hadn't helped at all. And Hina Mizawa, it was impossible to outwit them. Even though I was on the other side of the door, I wanted to get as far away from her as possible. One steps, two steps. With each one, her sniveling apologies became more distant. So wait, did she actually get her hand out of the door? Or does she have, like, severed fingers now? It said somehow she was able to get her fan out from there, but it sounded like they were about to be cut off. So it feels like that'd be pretty tough to do with the door. Not really. Like, I mean, the human finger like has about as much resistance as like a fucking carrot or something. I don't believe that for a second. We've had this conversation before. I don't believe that for a second. Yeah, the only thing that stops you from doing it is the fact that you don't want to fucking bite through your own finger. I don't believe it for a second. I disagree with that. I think that a carrot has decidedly less resistance than a human finger. Uh, you can pick up heavy weights with fingers and they don't snap off. You can't do that with a carrot. It breaks. That just sounds like you're using a shitty carrot. <laughs> <laughs> I sprinted up the stairs and dove into my room. As you would expect, I was finally no longer able to hear her repeating her endless apology. Diving into my bed, I was startled by the hard lump I felt. There was something in my bed? It's the phone, you dumbass. It was the receiver. Finally remembered, I was in the middle of a call with Oishi-san. Looking at the clock, apparently not much time had passed since I went downstairs. Could it be that my clock had run out of batteries? I talked with Renner for so long, how did almost no time pass? The hand on the clock was ticking forward one second every second as usual. I put the still warm receiver to my ear, and time which felt frozen began moving once again. Hello, Oishi-san, sorry to keep you waiting. No, not at all, I didn't wait that long, sonny. Came it became apparent the amount of time that had passed between myself and Oishi-san was different. Over the phone, I could hear an energetic voice from a sports program or something. I drove home just how far away Oishi-san really was. Rena came just now. Ah, did she come to play with you? I wasn't confident I could coherently explain the situation to Oishi-san. <laughs> but I didn't need to right now. Right now, I needed to know about Rena. That's right, I was planning to ask him more about Rena. But her little visit had interrupted the conversation. What was true and what was false, I couldn't tell. The one thing I knew was the single grim reality that Rena was suspicious. I might be able to figure something out if I asked Oishi-san about her. 
Up until now, I had regretted it whenever I forced myself to ask about things that I was better off not knowing, but looking at it that way, you could say I'd hit rock bottom. There was no possible way I could feel any more regret than I did right now. Rather, I wanted to know if there was anything beyond this I would regret more. Forget about tomorrow. It wasn't out of the realm of possibility for something to happen tonight. I wanted to know everything I could. I was absolutely not going to die like this. Not without knowing anything. I definitely won't. Regarding Rena Ryuku saying, I did a bigger digging. Was much. Understood that he was talking in circles. A bit meant I dug so deep it'd be hard to discuss with you since you're her friend. Oh good, and also deciding what other people mean for them. <laughs> I want to know everything from your research. I don't think you'll be very interested in what I got to say, though. Oishi-san. I spoke as calmly as possible to Oishi-san, who was continuing to avoid the issue. And then I said it. I think Rena Ryugu is suspicious. Even if the past incidents were from Oyashiro-sama's curse, Rena Ryugu is definitely involved. And you have some sort of proof that makes you believe that she's suspicious, huh? The manner in which she spoke became very firm. Do you have some sort of proof? That was him talking as a detective. Ellie, you have circumstantial evidence. I see. I could tell even over the phone how disappointed he was. Pulling on the fishing line when he felt a bite only to reel in the bait. Disappointed but ready to cast the line once more. That's how it seemed. Oh, san you can't do anything without physical proof, can you? What it meant was, you can't come and save me without proof. I stuck that barb in there. As he loved roundabout ways of saying things, he understood me just fine. Ah! <laughs> it's fine, May Bear san I'll protect you. That was not the least bit reassuring. Oh, Ishi-san was just using me to continue his investigation. Oh, you click skip. Oh. Ah! I was just going to get killed, and my corpse would be an important piece of evidence. That's all I was to him. Whether I'm alive or dead may be of no more concern to your investigation, but it's all over for me when I die! Oishi-san went silent on the other end of the line. That may have been too blunt, but I didn't care. All I needed to relay to Oishi-san was that I was currently in a very dangerous position. But please, tell me. Tell me about Rena. <sighs> Satoshi transferred out. And not too far in the future, I'll probably do what Rena called transferring out as well. But you won't be able to find my corpse. You haven't even been able to find his body yet. All right, May Barasan, please calm down. I was already suppressing my agitation, even without Oishi-san having to tell me. It wouldn't solve anything if I continued to scream about my mistrust in the police. It would seem that I could only depend on myself and the bat Satoshi left behind to protect me. Then, I at least wanted to know about what happened before Rena transferred schools. And we'll have to we're learn about that next time! I kept hoping we would reach a chapter end because, like, I... Before, we're in the thick of it now. Yeah, we're... Th like, I... I because you were giving me the like, hey, hey, time thing, and I'm like, I know, but like, I, th you've been seeing that we don't have a chapter break or anything. Got yeah, it. That happens sometimes. It does happen sometimes. Sorry, everyone. We'll have to figure out what was up with Rena's past next time. Next time. Smash that like, comment and subscribe.